Hi everybody, Physics Ninja. Today what I want to do is look at two uh, boat river crossing problems. In the first one, I'm pointing my boat directly across the river, but there is water flowing at a certain speed. And the first question I have is, how far am I going to drift downstream as I cross this, uh, this river? In the second problem, I don't want to have any drift. So I want to start uh, moving my boat across the river in such a way that I land exactly across from where I started. So you got to set up the problem slightly differently uh, given this information. So we're going to teach you how to do these two problems. Like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, let's get started. All right, so we're going to set up this problem here. We have the distance from shore to shore is 500 meters. And now I'm going to give you two quantities, okay? I'm going to give you the velocity of the river relative to the land, right? If someone here is standing over here on the land, they're going to see that the river is flowing uh, in the east direction. And I'm going to give you that value to be two kilometers per hour. Okay. Uh, the other thing I'm going to tell you is how fast the boat can travel relative to the river. Okay. So in this case, it's going to be this value over here. And for this first problem, problem one, the boat uh, the velocity of the boat relative to the water is going to be due north. Okay, so straight up. Now, you're not going to end up going straight up because the river is also pushing you uh, to the east. So at the end, what we're really interested in here for this problem is what is the velocity of the boat, not relative to the river, but relative to the land. Okay, so I'm going to call that vote, uh, sorry, <laughs> velocity of the boat B relative to the land. Now this is a relative velocity problem, okay? So in order to determine this vector over here, which is the vector that is going to be the direction of the boat, um, you have to kind of add two other vectors. And the way you do this, it's very straightforward. So you consider your first variable here, which is boat, okay? So I'm gonna write the velocity of the boat, and that's going to be relative to something. We'll figure out what to put right here. But I, in order to get it relative to the land, I have to also add two vectors, okay? And the way I always do this now is I can insert any quantity here as long as it's the same value. And that's kind of how I do relative velocity problems. So in this case, I'm given the velocity of the boat relative to the river. So my variable that's going to be entered right here is going to be the letter R. Now it has to be the same variable that's on this side. Okay, so one way of writing now that the velocity of the boat relative to the land as a vector sum of two other velocities. It's the velocity of the boat relative to the river plus the velocity of the river relative to the land. Okay, and this is really the quantity I'm looking for. Okay, so the next thing I have to do is, well, how do we find, for example, how big this is? So you're adding two vectors, right? Whenever you're adding two vectors, I'm interested in two things. I'm interested in what is the magnitude, right? How big is that vector. And for this, all you really have to do is use Pythagorean, right? Because what you have here is a right angle triangle because this boat is traveling north and the river is traveling east. So here you can simply write this as something like this, right? It's going to be the magnitude of the boat relative to the river. And you have to square that plus the velocity of the river relative to the land. And you have to square that. Now we can keep everything in kilometers per hour or you can convert it to meters per second. It doesn't matter. Let's just work right now in kilometers per hour. Uh, so what I'm gonna have here is 7.5 squared and then plus two squared. You put that in the calculator, you should obtain that the velocity of the boat relative to the land, at least the magnitude of this vector, um, gives me 7.75. Oops, 7. Uh, 75. Again, this is in kilometers per hour. Now, if I wanted to convert that, well, let's do a conversion. Let's also get the value in meters per second. All right. So I want to get rid of hours. I can get rid of hours by going through minutes. But if I go through minutes, I also have to get rid of minutes and get seconds at the end because my goal is really to get um, a velocity in meters per second. I also have kilometers over here where I started with and I want to end up with meters. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to get rid of the kilometers. So I have to divide through to cancel those and I want to get meters at the end. All right, now all you have to do is fill in these brackets. So in one hour, I have 60 minutes. In one minute, I have 60 seconds. 
and in one kilometer, I have a thousand meters. Uh, if you multiply everything out, it ends up being that all you have to do is take this 7.75 and divide it by all of these three brackets and end up giving you 3.6. All right, and if you do that, and you do that carefully, you should get uh, 2.15. Now I went ahead and I did that for all of these other values also. This one was 2.08. If I convert it to meters per second and the velocity of the river relative to the land, uh, did that one and 0 0.56 uh, meters per second. All right, so that's great. Now we know kind of how fast you're moving along uh, this line right here. Let me go ahead and kind of just emphasize it. This is the speed here is going to be 2.15 and you're gonna be going along that direction. Well, now we know everything about this triangle, what we can do now is find what is this angle theta, right? What is the angle theta that you're going to travel um, kind of relative to the north direction? And for that, I'm just gonna use tangent, right? Tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is going to give me this magnitude of, uh, remember it's opposite over the adjacent so for that case, we have that it's the river of the land and divided by the boat relative to the river. Okay, so that simply gives me, again, I can work in kilometers per hour, it doesn't matter. It's just the ratio, so it's two divided by 7.5. All right, so now we can get an expression for the angle theta in involves inverse tan, and this is two over 7.5. All right, if I do that carefully uh, in the calculator, I should get something that is very close to 15 degrees. All right, so I've got quite a lot of information now. I know the speed and I know the angle. So I really know everything about my vector here for the velocity of the boat relative to the land. All right, so this is what we have. We've got our velocity now, which is uh, 7.75, but it's directed at 15 degrees, right? We've calculated both of those things. But really what I wanted to find for this problem, I wanted to find how far did I drift, right? What is this distance X right here? Okay, and in order to do this, there's kind of a lot of different ways you can do this, but if I consider this triangle right here, which is my velocity triangle, I'm just gonna redraw it, except I'm gonna, I'm gonna redraw it in terms of the distances. Right, I know that this distance right here is 500 meters, right? That's the distance to cross the river if I was going directly across. And I know that this angle is 15 degrees. Again, what I'm looking for is X, which is defined as the distance which is opposite of that angle. Well, guess what I can use again? I can go back to write an expression for tangent of theta. Tangent of theta equals to X over 500. So guess what, X is 500 tangent of 15 degrees. I right, go ahead and plug that in your calculator. Uh, what you should find is approximately 134 meters. Okay, so that's kind of, that's it. That's how far I'm gonna drift down, right? This is 134. All right, uh, another question I may ask is how long does it take you to cross the river, right? How much time? What is the time to cross? Or this problem, how would you find that? Well, again, you're, you have a velocity which is at an angle here, um, but it has a component of the velocity which is straight across, and that is simply 7.75, right? If I'm looking for how much time does it take to travel a distance along this direction over here, that is 500 meters. So all you really have to do for this problem, if you think about it, there's no acceleration in here, so it's just simply the velocity is distance divided by time. Again, if I'm looking for time, you just rearrange this expression, distance divided by the velocity, and the distance is 500. All right, well, which velocity do you think I should use now, right? There's really three different ones. Well, I'm looking at a distance which is in the north direction, so I should be using a velocity that has a component in the north direction. So in this case, it would simply be um, the velocity of the boat relative to the river, right? That is that component of the velocity that I'm interested in. I'm gonna work in meters per second rather than kilometers per hour because this distance here is in meters. So this is gonna be 2.08 uh, meters per second. Okay, you put that in the calculator and what you should get uh, over here is approximately uh, 240 seconds. Now, depending on how much rounding you did over here, you may get 241, but uh, this is close enough. So it takes you 240 seconds in order to cross the river.
Okay, in that 240 seconds, I've actually also gone 134 meters east. Okay, all right, let's look at problem two now. All right, so the next par problem over here is, now what we want to do is we want to kind of uh, position our boat and we want to kind of start going at an angle over here such that our net direction here is straight across. So we're not gonna drift down river like in the previous case because we're gonna point our boat at a certain angle. So the question is what angle do I have to point the boat at in order to simply go in a straight line across this river, okay? So if you think about it now, before we had the boat relative to the river and that is still going to be the same, it's gonna be our 7.5 kilometers per hour and we're still moving in a river that is drifting east at a speed of two kilometers per hour. Okay, so the vectors, again, it's the same vector addition as before. We have the velocity of the boat relative to the land uh, has to be equal to the velocity of the boat relative to uh, the river as a vector plus the velocity of uh, the river relative to the land. Okay, again, we always have kind of the same variable over here when we're doing uh, relative velocities. Okay, our goal is to find what is this vector. And again, you're looking at the vector diagram here. You could see that how they're adding together in order to give you a straight line right across. And that's what we want. Again, we have a right angle. So what you can use now is still Pythagorean. We, in this case here, we know the, hypo, uh, the hypotenuse of this triangle. We know this is 7.5 kilometers per hour, okay? And we know that this guy over here is still the two kilometers per hour. So what we wanna do is we wanna figure out what is this, okay? So in order to do that, well, let's go ahead and just use Pythagorean theorem, okay? So it says that the velocity of the boat uh, relative to the river squared has to be equal to the velocity of the river relative to the land squared plus the velocity of uh, the boat relative to the land squared. Okay, and again, uh, this is the term that we are looking for right here. Okay, so let's get that one all by itself. So we have the velocity of the boat relative to the land is equal to the square root of both of these guys, right? Uh, velocity of the boat relative to the river squared minus the velocity of the river relative to the land squared. You have to substitute in our numbers. You can either work in kilometers per hour or in meters per second. It doesn't matter. If I work in kilometers per hour, it would look something like this. Uh, 7.5 squared and minus uh, 2 squared. So at the end of the day, we'd get that the magnitude of the velocity of the boat relative to the land uh, is approximately equal to 7.2 kilometers per hour. If you divide that by 3.6, you'd see that that's pro approximately equivalent to two, two meters per second. Okay, so we have kind of both units over there. All right, so this was kind of the first thing I wanted to look at. The next thing I wanna do is, well, at which angle do I have to direct my boat in order to have this velocity going straight up? All right, what is this angle theta again? Again, you know everything about this triangle. So you just gotta be a little bit careful when you write down the expression. Let's use tangent of theta again. Um, so tangent of theta. Again, have a look at this side. Now it's the opposite over the adjacent, right? The opposite in this case is two. Now the adjacent is what we just calculated here is 7.2. So again, you can write an expression for theta using the inverse tan, two over 7.2. Uh, what you get here uh, at the end gives me an angle of approximately 15.6 degrees, similar to the other case, but a little bit bigger, right? You have to position a little bit more. In the other case, we found 15 going down, but now it's a little bit bigger. All right, and the last thing we could ask is, well, how much time does it take to get across this river, given all this information? Right, again, we know that the river is 500 meters wide. Well, how much time would it take? Again, if you think about it, this is just uh, speed, is distance over time. So I can write an expression for my time as distance over the speed. All right, so which one am I taking, right? I'm going to take the distance to be 500 meters. So which magnitude should I take over here? 
Again, it, 500 meters is the distance straight across. That's my displacement. So again, I should be taking the magnitude of that velocity that is also along the same direction. And that is what we just calculated. In this case here, it was two meters per second, right? Um, okay, so the time, uh, 500 over two, gives me a time of 250 seconds. Okay, notice this is bigger than problem one, right? Bigger than uh, problem one. In problem one, we had 240 seconds. Just write that down. In this case, we have it takes a little bit longer, okay? Actually, my velocity um, going across here, straight across, is a little bit smaller. In the previous case, it was 7.5. In this case, it's 7.2. So that's why it takes me an extra 10 seconds here to cross this river. All right, folks, that's it for me. Hopefully, this kind of highlights a little bit on how you can approach some of these problems. Uh, thanks for watching.